we're back with Photon, the video and photo robot. Welcome to Hacker Week. I'm reworking these Roomba motors because they're a little bit noisy. They're really dirty inside and I'm also reworking the uh, motor mounts. I don't like the way it was. It was um, having some problems getting over minor obstacles. So if it was to run over a carpet or something at Maker Faire, I really don't think that it would make it over it that well and this thing's going to be a bit heavy. I want to run this before I clean it and show you how to take it apart and clean it, but I want you to hear it before I clean it up. It's a little crunchy sounding and it's probably pretty dirty inside. So these are pretty easy to take apart. They're not, uh, not too difficult. This side with uh, these screws in it are uh, holding on the cover that covers up the belt. So let's take that off. Well, that's not too bad. It looks pretty good. I think I'll leave that one alone. Okay, the other side is where the planetary gear lives that uh, drives the wheel. There are two screws to take out to get this cover off. One is there and one is down inside that little cylinder. We'll pull those off. Also right here in the middle is a little teeny bushing that you uh, have to be careful you don't lose. It's very important to keep that. Helps hold everything together. Set that aside. Let's pull that bushing out. Now you want to look in that bushing if you are doing one of these cleanings and make sure that there's no crud right in there in that center hole. Hair and stuff tends to gunk up in there. Now here's the uh, the wheel and here's the three screws that hold the wheel on. It's really amazing how much dirt and crud and everything can get inside these things and build up like right there around that. There's a big nasty chunk of just hair and a little bit of the lubricant that's on there. I'm just gonna wipe off some of this yuck. I'll take out these three screws that hold this wheel on. They hold the wheel to the planetary gear assembly. Let's get those out and we'll see just how dirty this motor is in this section. I've taken some of these out and found so much dirt and hair wound around everything that it's like incredible that the thing even moves still. Yeah, this is a pretty good example of that. You can see down inside, there's a big glob of stuff right here. It's pretty gross. It's like, you know, floor dirt and, and uh, hair and just dander. Human skin cells, whoa. Okay, enough of that. Clean all this out in here. Just give that a little wipe, get that free of everything. Now this assembly, there's some hair and crud around the outside. Let's get all that cleaned off. Probably not a good idea to uh, be um, licking your fingers when you're done doing this or eating uh, M&Ms. <laughs> yeah, you definitely want to keep this stuff uh, out of your face. Some pretty gross stuff, really. So. Now this part is the uh, planetary gear assembly. We're going to take these four screws off. They hold the housing for that planetary gear. Well, it actually is the planetary gear, I guess. Or is it the sun gear? I always get that confused. You can go look it up. Go Google a planetary gear transmission and you'll see how they work. They're really cool. They're a really compact transmission. It's in, uh, it's what's in a lot of cordless drills these days. Now this one isn't too bad inside. It's fairly clean. Um, this isn't so bad. This has still got a lot of grease in it. Inside uh, here in these gear teeth, I've seen a lot of yuck built up on other ones. This one's not so bad. It's just still got some of the grease from the factory in it and uh, only a little bit of hair. But sometimes there's lots of it and uh, it'll make the motor really noisy. So we'll go ahead and get all that stuff out. 
wipe that off on a rag. Let's get out some of the excess grease. We don't need all that grease, really. Well, the planetary gear assembly is in two parts. This is one section right here. This one's got a little bit of yuck and crud in it. This will pop apart. If it's really, really dirty, what you do is you pop off this black triangle and there's a flat side to it. The flat side goes up when you put it back together. Just remember that. You just pop it off like that. It comes off from those three spindles. The other side of it has some uh, little contours to it that you can see. I said this one's not real bad. It's got some hair and crud in it, but I've seen some of these with uh, hair wound around these things so bad that it's, oops, it's just black. It's just black and thick and geez, yuck. Yuck is the word to describe it. And through the magic of video editing, we jump ahead and put that little bushing back on. Do not forget that. There's a little tab right here, a slot and a tab. They line up. Make sure you do that and then drop it into place and it should snap together pretty nicely and then tighten these two screws that's it one motor freshly overhauled okay all the old setup is removed long gone and forgotten about because that's just not going to work what I've decided on is there's a square drawn on the bottom of here and theoretically if the wheels are at the same point of contact in a perfect square when it tank turns it should tank turn with a minimal of that side slippage herky jerky thing that the other all-terrain robot did. So I've got a setup here where I'm mounting the motor to a piece of angle aluminum and then I will mount that piece to the board like so. So if you were looking at it from the edge, here's the floor, my hand would represent the floor. And this is where the top of the robot will be. So I need to anchor it to the motor. So once again, these Roomba motors have proven to be very versatile. What I ended up doing was using one of the mount screws that's already there. Then I drilled a hole through right here and put a 1032 screw in there. So let me show that to you here as I mount this one up. This is the side cover to this. This is the, uh, the pulley cover to this motor right here. Take that off. Uh, let's get you oriented right here. It's gonna go like this. So we'll pull that off. Now I'll take this and put my 1032 screw in there, which fits nice and tight. <clears throat> Now on the back side of it, I've got a little burr of plastic I need to get rid of there real quick. Okay, so we'll put that through, poke it through the hole, put a little bit of uh, Loctite left over from the Parallax quadcopter build. Thanks Parallax. Now I'm going to put a 3 8 1032 nut on there. Take the nut driver and snug that up just a bit. Now I'll line it up to the hole and I'll purposely tilt it down a little bit. In other words, a little bit of preload to make sure that it makes good contact with the uh, surface of the wood. Now I'll tighten that nut up. Screwdriver on one side, nut driver on the other. And we're gonna get that good and tight. I'll really crush that plastic down good and that Loctite will help hold that in place. Now I can just take this, drop it back onto the side of the motor, and put the screws back in. These three screws right here will be the uh, ones that came on the motor. They're short screws. And then the one that goes in the other hole, I've found a screw that's a little bit longer so that it bites into that plastic really well. And that one is right here. Let's put that in. 
and I'm not going to tighten it yet because I want to put it against the surface now. Make sure that it's making good contact. Nice and even. Yes, it is. And we'll tighten that up. There we go. One dual motor assembly. And that will go on the edge just like that. I'll drill some holes in here and then I'll run some of these screws in to hold it in place. So we just need to make one more of these now. One mounts here, one mounts over here, and we can get this wired up and test it out. I have high hopes for this. There we go, seven screws holding each side. Okay, let's wire that all up and test it. There we go. We are all wired up and ready for testing. We've got a motorcycle battery on here this time around. No more Roomba batteries or Makita batteries or anything like that. I'm hoping this will hold up for the full day at Maker Faire. If uh, it doesn't test out well enough, I'll just get a brand new battery. This is a used one, but I don't know what the uh, amp hours are, or I could actually calculate that and put an amp meter on here and see just what it draws. But anyway, let's put this thing on the ground and check out how the new drivetrain works. So initially when I fired this up, I had the, uh, the code from an old Roverbot that had a tiny wheelbase, and the turnaround time was only like 300 uh, milliseconds. So I had to change that to about a second and a half in order for this thing to be able to turn around because of the extra weight on the sticky rubber tires. So let's turn it on now. I've got it working well enough, I think, uh, for a cement floor. And Maker Faire shouldn't have too many things in the way for this thing to run over and get hung up on. And if it does, you know, I can just intervene and help it out a little. So let's give it a try here. See, it has a hard time turning. It's all that extra weight. And of course, it's running a pretty stupid program right now. There's no bump switches. It's just the uh, ping sensor. And that's it. So it's having a bit of a hard time. And again, it's because of all this extra weight. It's pretty much hung up already. So let's help it out for the sake of testing. See, that's the problem. It doesn't want to turn very easily. Those wheels are sticking to the floor like crazy. So the answer might be to make the wheels not as sticky or make it lighter, but I'm not so crazy about that idea because I really want that extra amp hour of that 12 volt battery. It doesn't do too bad. It's gonna get in trouble here, so I gotta rescue it. I can see where its biggest problem that it's gonna have is on uneven cement floor surfaces. So there might be a little bit of work involved here still. Maybe I can take those uh, suspension components I have underneath and articulate them somehow. I might be able to do that, but I don't want it to do that too much because I'm gonna have that upright with the cameras and I don't want that tipping all over the place so this is quite a challenge actually because of all the extra weight and what I'm limited with here there is the possibility that I could get some mechanum wheels and play around with those um, they're kind of expensive but maybe I can get some I might research that later this evening so this has been a good night of building and I've got a pretty uh, good platform working here at least now the thing uh, will cruise around a little better than the other one. The other one was terrible, trust me. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, let's, uh, let's keep moving along here and see what we can do to make this better. Okay, back to the workbench uh, for problem solving. This thing with the wheels not wanting to turn well. Well, it's because of the weight and it's because of the stickiness of the wheels. The wheels don't want to slide sideways during a tank steer. 
Um, so here's what I'm going to try. I've got one of the other extra motors and I've got a wheel off and it's hollow in the back and there it is and it's coated with this sort of a silicone rubber kind of thing. But I think with a little bit of work it looks like, yes, see I can peel it away. It does peel off and then I have just a slick plastic wheel which I'm going to try. I'm going to see if maybe just the slick plastic wheel will work because the only traction I really need is on the cement. Let's see if you just give it a pull. Uh, get this part first all the way around the perimeter and then probably just be able to roll it right off. Yep, looks like it. Well, that's cool because that means I can put it back on later. There we go. One Roomba tire, one Roomba wheel naked of said tire. Okay, times all four wheels and then we'll go give it another go. This just might be the solution. We got this piece of 60 grit paper here. I'm going to take the wheel and just pass it over that. Give it a little texture. Can't hurt. Well, it seems to be functioning much better on the cement. Of course, it's not going to be able to deal with carpet and mats and rugs and things like that. But I don't think that is going to be a problem at Maker Fair. It's all cement floor. Okay, this is great. Major step in the right direction. Testing with the cardboard tube in place now, which will be the torso for Photon the robot. Up at the top would be the cameras, but for now I've got Hexababy taking a ride, a.k.a. Sophie's Halloween costume. <laughs> so this is working out pretty good. Uh, that's about it for this week as far as any further development. And I think it worked out quite well, actually. Those wheels are doing a pretty good job, and uh, they're just wearing into the cement right now, getting a nice little scraping of texture on them. But they seem to be doing a pretty good job. At Maker Fair, if I run into a minor obstacle like a carpet and I have to reach down and help the thing move, well, so be it. So, pretty good progress. Got the thing locomoting around now, okay, and I think I can work with that. Next time, we're gonna put bump switches on. There will be four of them uh, around the base, just left, right, forward, backwards. Uh, same thing on the torso. It will be sensitive left, right, forwards, and backwards, and I've got a really cool idea on how I'm going to do that. So be sure to catch the next episode, and we will implement it. It's uh, a pretty good one. Anyway, um, that's about it, and I'm glad that uh, Hexababy's here. Got to help out. Um, always good to see Hexababy. Anyway, until next time. We're back with the Photon Photo Video Robot.